Oh, I'm recording. Howdy. I am Professor Parks, PhD, and welcome. Uh, I, you know, I was trying to take a nap today, and I decided that, uh, you know, I felt like a rant. So here I am, and I may or may not be wearing pants while I do it. Um, and Luna seems to be in a mood, so she may be ranting as well. You might be wondering what the what I'm going to rant about. Well, I will tell you, what I'm going to rant about is. Um, as the title of this probably indicates, mental illness and neuro, neurodivergency are not fucking superpowers. Um, so the reason why I say this is because I just recently read an article critiquing the biographer for Elon Musk for perpetuating a certain trope, and that trope is the mentally ill genius. Now, I'm not going to speak on the book. I haven't read it. Uh, I'm not going to speak on Elon Musk. You all know that I don't like him, so there's that. But I will speak on the whole genius trope uh, and mentally ill and neurodivergent trope. Tropes like, for example, the, in, the, in the movie A Beautiful Mind, um, or more specifically, um, now that I've been a very long time since I watched that movie, but I do remember it falls into that Rain Man uh, that and Mercury Rising show that people with autism can do amazing calculations in their head, memorize timetables and uh, seemingly superhuman things of that nature. Even uh, the Reardon Half Blood uh, Half Blood novels show dyslexia as uh, indication that half of your blood is in fact uh, divine. You know things like this really really bother me. Uh, Doctor Who has an episode called. Uh, Doctor Who has an episode that involves Van Gogh, which I fucking despise. More on that later. Um, and, and so, my rant is that such a, such a um, trope, or such a belief, because I do think that there are people who actually believe this shit, that there is that if you're autistic or have Asperger's, that you have some higher mental function, that you have sacrificed social um, skills with uh, some kind of higher math function. I've even heard the ridiculous fucking claim that autism and Asperger's are the next step in human evolution. Mental illness and neurodivergency can be dysfunctional, and they can be severely dysfunctional to the point that people have to fight to f have a quote-unquote normal life in order to feel comfortable in their own skins, in order to feel comfortable moving around in society without fear of prejudice or uh, persecution in any way. On top of that, they may have to fight personal demons on a daily basis. They may, have to, they may have to endure suffering that the quote-unquote normal person or everyday person has no conception of. So trying to romanticize these people, or to, in order to, these people, in order to romanticize people who suffer like this is disgusting. Is there a correlation between genius and mental health? I've, I've heard that there is. Um, but I've also heard that there's a correlation between genius and being left-handed. Unlike the, the latter, that former is potential, that, that looking at that former or believing that that correlation is causality is dangerous because what that will seem to indicate, and I've also seen this in modern media as well, is that you have someone with bipolar, for example, and they are some kind of genius, mathematical genius or artistic genius. Usually mania is uh, equated with some kind of imag uh, just greater imagination and creativity than the average person. Hello, Luna. Um, and they don't want to take medication because they don't want to stifle that. They don't want to... They don't want to inhibit their genius. Um, having bipolar is potentially a fatal fucking disease. You need to medicate it. You need to manage it. I don't give a shit what kind of genius you have. 
you need to ma uh, you need to manage your illness plus the fact that I don't believe in the causality until someone can show me genetically that genius of any kind is actually tied to the genes of mental illness I am of the opinion that if you have a regulated uh, regulated emotional life you are still a genius your genius does not come from your mental illness your mental illness may be a byproduct of how your genius has has affected your life in the past but it is not a, ca a causal relationship if you manage one you will not lose the other and I think I'm done with that rant actually <laughs> key point is um, with mental illness that I want to make with mental illness and um, it is a disease that needs to be it needs to be addressed it needs to be medicated if that is what your uh, medical professional advises it needs to be uh, you need to I hate the term but sell you have to have self-care you have to pay more attention to your or I shouldn't say more you have to pay particular attention to your diet you have to pay uh, particular attention to your exercise your sleep these things play a heavy role in how your mental illness is going to affect you at least in my in my case and that's also what you know uh, therapists and so forth have told me is that um, these are things that I really need to pay particular attention to now let's go to the Van Gogh episode and please never mention it to me I've had people mention it to me in the in a positive light like oh ha, look they're addressing it fuck them and the horse they rode in on for two reasons one they uh, they in the episode and again I've only watched it once and it was a very long time ago but I had a visceral reaction after it somehow for some reason or whatever there's a monster in the episode that's invisible to everyone else except Van Gogh why because he's bipolar and Doctor Who or uh, who is uh, Matt Smith has to wear this giant just fucking ridiculous Doctor Who's type on uh, Doctor Seuss type contraption in order to see this monster so he needs uh, Van Gogh's help to do it again mental illness as a fucking superpower no, fuck off. Fuck that noise. Uh, this is not something that we should, it should not be celebrated, should not be romanticized. I don't know how else I can say that. I know I sound like a broken record, but it seriously undermines the, the seriousness, potentially deadly seriousness, of a fucking disease. Imagine if someone said, oh, you know what? If you get cancer, you can stop bullets the fuck second thing I, I wanted to address about that was the ending where you know you know obviously Van Gogh is depressed all that he doesn't he doesn't have faith in himself particularly in his life Van Gogh was not a, not nearly as appreciated as he is now and so what does Doctor Who decide to do he decides to condescend and take Van Gogh to the future into a museum to show just how wonderful his life uh, or his works are. You know, it's very touching. Until you understand or until you remember the fact that after this, Van Gogh still offed himself. That touching moment goes to something that I cannot stand. Well, that's overstating. Something that I really wish people would um, would not do it including myself is that depression self-esteem is irrational you cannot logic or not you cannot logic your way into improving them you cannot say oh look you're uh, here's an objective piece of truth that says you are not a human well, wasted completely wasted human being that is not something you can provide someone who is suffering from an emotional illness because they don't do objective they do not do in that sense in that narrow regime they do not do objective I'm not trying to say that uh, that people with mental illness cannot be objective I'm not saying that people with mental illness are cannot be rational I'm just saying in terms of say for example self-esteem someone who is mentally ill 
may have a problem with trying to look at that rationally or uh, objectively. So this idea that you can save or help or whatever by saying, no, no, here's an objective piece that says, yes, you're loved. It doesn't work that way. Because you would be amazed at the mental gymnastics, someone with mental, with myself, frequently people have pointed out, well, you've accomplished this, you've accomplished that, you should, you know, you are a smart, caring human being. You would be amazed at the mental gymnastics that I will go through to invalidate all of those points. I am a fucking master at it. Why? Because something in my head really wants me to be on believe that those things aren't true. Those things are, I have a narrative in my head that I am a living piece of shit. And whatever it is that you, objective fact that you want to put in my brain to counter that narrative, I don't want to listen to. I will go through just amazing mental gymnastics in order to nya, 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 nya. which reminds me of something which I can't quite put my finger on. I don't know why. Um, it's, not, it's not rational. So don't try to treat it as such. So yeah, that really fucking pissed me off. That episode, re I really, really don't like it. Um, because it perpetuates to, uh, it perpetuates a stupid ass trope and it perpetuates a, uh, a mode of behavior that is not helpful. trying to think of what is helpful you know if someone say someone is in that situation where you are um you know you believe them to be a val or you believe them to be not just a valid human being but an extraordinary human being you know what would i do if i were to meet van gogh in his time and i found him to be depressed um and he believed that i was from the future would I try to convince him? No, no, no. You are a cultural touchstone at this point. College students all over the world have your the, the, the picture of you without an ear on their walls. It's amazing. Would I tell him that? No. Um, because I know it wouldn't be helpful. What I would tell him? I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, it would depend on the situation. Um, what I would probably tell him or what I would want to hear is uh, you know just I don't know I, not really unsolicited advice uh, things along the line of you know how, how have you been taking care of yourself you've been sleeping well you, you've been sleeping good um, and you know remind them of you know I you know why do you paint for him specifically, why do you paint? Why do you do this stuff? Do you do it because of anybody else? Does the admiration of everyone else matter to you so much that it motivates you to do the work? If not, then why does it fucking matter? Um, you know, that's what I tell myself. I mean, granted, it's very, you know, being, <laughs> this is kind of going off the rant, but you know, obviously if you are someone who uh, is of a mind to shit on yourself, uh, any kind of impediment to a, a goal, any kind of negative reaction to a goal is going to seriously affect you, or again, seriously affect me. And I have to tell myself, is this why I'm doing it? Do I need a praise? Do I need approval from others in order to do what I do? And no. It's nice. It's it's really nice to have affirmations from other outside affirmation, but it is uh, it is not the motivation. And I am tired of living my life retro or reactively. I want to take something and I want to build it proactively because it is something that I want to do. It is I, f I find to be of a moral imperative or an ideological imperative, something that pushes me forward. Not because I believe that it would 
give me fame, fortune, and uh, make me good at the sex. Um, again, you know, and, and that has been a problem in my life is that I've done certain things because of a certain expectation of I wanted those goals. I wanted that positive affirmation. I realized that those are hollow and that I, I obviously never succeeded on any of them. And a lot of my things in my life I have been reactive. Uh, I have chosen certain paths in my life because of, of life events have kind of thrown me in that direction. And I'm tired of it. Um, I, I'm tired of, of living my life that way. I want to be proactive. And if I were to, if I were to give that, or if I were to talk to Van Gogh, and if I were to, and he was in a crisis of some sort, I'd, I'd say the same thing to him in that, hey, do you like living in, do you like being, uh, in, or not influenced, sort of chained or, um, uh, or, negatively affected by everyone else is again is that why you do this or you know look to why it is i would ask him or i would ask him to look into why it is he painted what joy uh, what does it bring joy does he have a statement that he wants to make you know what is the importance of doing his uh, of creating those masterworks and i'd, I'd ask him to focus on that Again, not because it's going to bring him fame, fortune, and make him good at the sex. But because it is important to him. Because it is meaningful to him. Fame and all that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I really can't speak on that because I don't have it. <laughs> By any stretch of the imagination. But to round this off, um, yeah, please don't perpetuate either through your own actions or support things that perpetuate this myth that having mental illness is a way is a necess is a necessary ingredient to genius, and that that mental health or that mental illness is necessary that but that in some way of if you were to get better if you were to treat that illness that that genius would diminish in the book apparently again i haven't read it in the book apparently um his former partner grimes refers to uh elon's more darker influence uh, in, impulses as demon mode and apparently the author seems to think that the demon mode is can be excused. His lack of empathy could be excused because of all of the the genius that comes with it. Fuck that noise right in the ear. Empathy and genius are also not uh, independent of one another. You can have both, and I think if you were to lose one of them, you need to lose the genius. You always need to have empathy. You shouldn't laugh when asked, "Hey, what do you think about people dying on your way to the, on to on, your, on the way to Mars?" You shouldn't laugh at that. You shouldn't say, "Oh, that's okay," because there's pl there's plenty of them where they come from. Plenty of people want to go to Mars. Um, that's fucked up. That's seriously fucked up. Anyway, that's I'm starting to get onto an Elon rant. Um, yeah. So this idea again. Again, this idea that maladaptive behavior or mental illness needs to be perpetuated or needs to exist in order for that genius to exist. Um, yeah. Please don't. All right. This has been the end of my, um, my rant. I might be, I might actually get up and go put some pants on. Maybe or maybe not. May not be necessary. I may be wearing pants. Who knows? You will never know. All right. Uh, peace out and clear skies.